Well, hello to everyone out there. This is really one of our first weekly webcasts that we would like to have. We, we kicked it off last week, but really didn't advertise it. Uh, but the intent of the show is to bring you guys into the show and let you be part of it. You know, nothing, uh, you know, uh, not, not much is going to be... Uh, uh, specific uh, items on the agenda, but we'll, we'll have certain uh, segments uh, by people. But uh, mainly, it's just to talk about anything and everything in ham radio. And uh, we've invited our viewers out there to join by uh, uh, by video link that we have. If anyone out there would like to be on the show, we'll be glad to put you on here. We've got a few people. Uh, on right now uh, that have joined us uh, we've got uh, Michael and let's see Michael is in uh, let me uh, let me switch over here and we'll we'll put you guys on here there we go we got Michael W1 DGL and where are you Michael you're up and where well, I see Michael your, your mic is muted you're gonna have to unmute the mic Okay, there you go. Oh, there you go. I'm in Prescott, Arizona. Okay, Prescott, Arizona there. Very good, Michael. Hey, what's the weather like up here or out there? Well, currently it's in the low 50s, uh, slightly overcast skies, but uh, very, very nice uh, weather here. Okay, very good. You're hearing in the background is the local net. Oh, okay, I was hearing some noise. I just started down. I was hearing some noise, and we've got uh, we've got Glenn on there. Glenn, can you uh, can you pop in here, Glenn? This is Glenn Popel. Hi, Tom. Hey, this is Glenn Popel. He uh, he's the author of the ARRL book, uh, Arduino for Ham Radio. We just had a big uh, uh, webcast a while back. Uh, how you doing, Glenn? And tell us, are you working on a new book yet? Um, well, I'm doing all right. I'm you know temperature here is about the same as it is over there. Um, let me turn this radio down. But um, I've got a few things going on. Um, I've got the two big things, of course, that you knew about. Um, I've got some things on the other side of the lab. This is kind of neat because you're actually live in the depth of my lab, so God only knows what's on the other table. All right. Well, I tell you what, we'll uh, we'll talk about some of those things in a little while. Uh, and uh, so just stand by and don't run away. And Michael, you can just hang out on here if you want to. Uh, I hope you're watching sure. on the W. I hope you're watching on the uh, W5KUB.com page because you'll see everything there, and uh, of course, here on the video link, you're only going to see uh, Glenn and myself. So uh, we'll be back to you guys here in a few minutes. Just uh, stick around, okay? All right, sure. All right, so we're back here, and. Uh, Let's see what we're doing in the chat room here. Let's get a count real quick. I don't know. I see 20 or so people in there, 20, 25 people, maybe some more joining us. I see a ZS6 in there. Uh, um, we're supposed to have uh, a friend of mine in, in uh, the U.K. join us, uh, Steve uh, um, M1 ERS is big into video webcasting over in the UK and he's been following us uh, quite a bit and we've been sharing information back and forth with him and I think he's going to try to join us here and um, let's see I think a couple more people are wanting to join us <clears throat> again if anybody wants to join us on the video send me a, a email an email uh, you can send it to uh, Tom at W5KUB.com, and uh, I'll send you back uh, real quick instructions on how you can get on here with us. Um, I was just uh, talking to a friend of mine in the UK again tonight. His name is uh, Ian, G3ZHI. Uh, and uh, Ian sent us a video. I want to run a quick video here that uh, Ian uh, uh, wanted to to show, and it's about ham radio, um, the start of ham radio. It's right at the at the end of uh, World War One, 
and uh, radio actually you know became possible back then and uh, the uh, it's, a, it's a good little video so I'm going to see if I can put that on for you guys real quick we're going to run that real quick uh, if I can find it okay let's see how this works out here In 1922, a radio transmitter powers up ready to make history. Nearby sits Arthur Burroughs, and with the words, Do hello, Marconi House, London, calling. Burroughs announces the arrival of the BBC. The age of British broadcasting has truly begun. Wait a minute, how did this moment ever happen? To start a radio station, you need people to have radios. But who has a radio before there's a radio station? High above the mud of Flanders in 1918 float disembodied voices. The First World War is the crucible for a new technology, sending speech by radio. When the fighting is done, a small but loyal army of enthusiasts comes home. They're a new breed, radio hams, a kind of virtual community scattered across the country, in living rooms, garden sheds, anywhere they can get a signal with their homemade sets. Then the Marconi company gets involved. At the heart of their team is the irrepressible Peter Eckersley. He soon tires of sending repetitive test signals to see how far they go and starts livening things Good up. Good Scottish a accent, Tom. Jones, singing songs. The hams love it. But the post office, who control the airwaves, aren't amused by such frivolous content interfering with more serious uses. In 1920, they ban the station. After a barrage of complaints, the post office is forced to relent but on one condition. Radio needs to be regulated. They bring electrical firms together to create a new entity, the British Broadcasting Company. They alone are granted the right to broadcast radio to the masses. They'll be powered by Britain's biggest transmitter yet, 2LO, an enormous jumble of valves and wires that takes up an entire room. And on a foggy night in 1922, 2LO comes to life. With 1.5 kilowatts of power, it can throw the voice of Arthur Burroughs right across London. Soon, his voice is joined by others in a medley of news, weather, and even music. And it's not just hams tuning in. Young and old, male and female, rich and poor, radios span the social spectrum, fast becoming must-have household goods. And so it is that the hobby of a few enthusiasts is standardized and nationalized. When the next World War comes around, it's announced to the nation on BBC Radio and heard by 9 million listeners. And that's how the information age came into the home. Well, I just wanted you to see that uh, video. That was uh, uh, Eon uh, G3ZHI uh, from the UK uh, was talking to me about that today. And uh, that is uh, from the uh, Science Museum, the Science Museum uh, there in uh, London, I believe. And it was kind of talking about the start of ham radio. And uh, it's uh, interesting. If you really think about it, what did come first? You know, it's like the chicken or the egg. Did the transmitter come first or the receiver come first? Actually, I guess they had to uh, to do both of them at the same time there. Well, let's go back here and let me see if I can find. Uh, let's see if I can find Glenn on here. If I click the right buttons, I'm getting there. There we go. Uh, I'm going to turn it back to Glenn. And Glenn, let's talk a little about the Arduino uh, that uh, uh, projects that you're working on and what you've done since our uh, our webcast. So go go ahead and take it, Glenn. Okay. Well, there's been quite a bit that's gone on. Um, I've been working on a couple projects. Uh, I have uh, been scheduled. I'm going to be doing a uh, a forum with the Four Days in May group up in Dayton on the Arduino and uh, going to be debuting some, some of the newer things that comes out of the lab. Uh, let me share a screen here with you, if I can figure this out. 
Um, got it here somewhere. Uh, no, I don't. Hang on. I closed it down. There we go. This is something that you and I have both been playing with. And that's this little guy. That's the little QRP transceiver. That's the frog calling uh, QRP transceiver. That's a little 1.8 watt CW transceiver. And uh, Tom and I both have been playing with this board. And I decided to take it a little further. And let's get the other picture up here. Uh, come back to me. I guess I'm here. I'm not sure. Oh, here we go. I'm still new to this. Give me a break. Yeah, okay. You're doing good. <laughs> and let's see if we can't get the other one up here. This is the end result um, of the actual project. We put an Arduino on it, and it is a full-blown 40-meter CW transceiver. Uh, it's got dual-speed tuning, a built-in keyer. Uh, dual range uh, RIT and the whole thing costs like 30 bucks something 40 bucks in that range now that, uh, that's got now, the that's got the uh, the Arduino what DDS VFO you built in there and that thing's very stable too right and uh, that's the really cool thing about it is you know this is all Arduino driven just a standard little Arduino nothing fancy uh, interface the DDS into that little frog sounds board which is crystal locked on 7.023 so we had to redesign the receive input on it and uh, do, a, do a few other minor mods we're talking like four or five part changes and uh, just a couple like two board trace cuts and that's the whole thing uh, it took me maybe a, a weekend to build the, the, the board and the the uh, shield for the Arduino, and probably about a week to get all the code going. So that's one of the things I've been playing with. So, so that's uh, you, you, you've got a, a CW transceiver, you've got a VFO, you've got a, a keyer, a CW keyer in there. Yes. W what else is in there? Uh, dual range RIT. The uh, I oh. use an computer for the tuning. Oh, okay. And 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 J six the J T sixty five? Not on this one. Okay, but you're you're working on putting J T sixty five in here, right? Yes I am. Uh and this is the really cool part. And I'm not going to show you the big thing. Can't do that. That's scheduled for date. But I can show you this. No, not that one. Uh this one maybe? Yeah. This is what I actually received off of that little itty bitty board with its little baby direct conversion NE602. It's just straight up. This was on my 40 meter vertical outside. And this was just a couple weeks ago on the 15th. And you can see I'm picking up ZS6, Venezuela, Canada, just all over the place. So we know that the receive side does work, and uh, let's switch back here. And this is the hard part because we actually had to. We only have one version of code, which is what we used on the JT65 Rebel. So I had to literally make that little board emulate the Rebel. And so what we have done is we indeed made it emulate the Rebel. And we actually are able to directly transmit JT65 on, think about this for a second, a CW only radio. Meaning, how do you send 65 tones on a CW only radio? That's the magic. Yeah, it's done with smoke and mirrors, I'm sure, but... So uh, I would uh, guess I would guess you just have to shift the frequency by 65 different parts. Right. What happened? Uh, Joe Large wrote the uh, rewrote his HFWST program 
uh, for the rebel. And that actually sends control codes to the chip kit Uno 32 on that box instead of the Arduino. We needed the Uno for a little more horsepower. And uh, what you've got is a we're sending control codes, not audio, to the box, and those codes shift the carrier. And of course, on the receive side, when you hear a shifting carrier, you're effectively hearing the tone shift. So we're generating the JT65 tones with basically FSK. Yeah. Well, look, hey, uh, since this is a new format for us, you know, we normally do live events like Hamfest and so forth. Uh, if, if there's anyone in the chat room that has questions for uh, Mr. Arduino here, uh, just uh, put your questions in the chat room, and he'll probably see them there. Or if not, maybe I'll see them, and I can read them to him. But uh, this uh, this is what this format is. It's an open format, uh, very informal. Different guests talk about different things. So uh, go ahead, Glenn. Sorry. Anything else here? Okay. No problem. Well, one of the things I can do, if you're ready, is I can grab this camera and show you the first ever view of the lab where all this deep dark stuff happens. All right, well, let's see your lab there. Okay. Try to hold the camera steady here. Let me switch the video so I can see it better. Okay. This is the lab. You can see I've got several projects going right now. Do not read the whiteboard. That has everything on it. Is that is that secret stuff on the whiteboard, secret stuff yeah, to come? Super secret stuff on the whiteboard. That, that's going to be in the next book, I think, right? Yeah. And then we come over to the other side of the lab, and first of all, you notice all the parts bins. Those are all full of pretty much Arduino parts. And uh, on the desk there, you can see a rotor. That's actually the old AR-22 style rotor, you know, those the ones with the solenoid clunk. Uh -huh. We are actually going to put the Arduino on that thing. And to give you a hint of where we're going to go with book two, see if we can't do this. These are some of the parts that will be in book two. You notice I have already stocked up on Unos and Leonardos. And we've got a couple cool little things here. See if I can't do this and get my finger over here. This is a voice recognition module, a shield that will plug onto the Arduino, and we plan to actually do some voice recognition stuff. This is our chip kit Uno, so you can see it's a little bit different than the Arduino. It's got that second row of headers. This guy has uh, 42 I.O. pins instead of the uh, 14 on the Arduino. Here we've got a little Ethernet module, so you can tell we're going to be going with some Ethernet-based projects. Yeah. This is something really cool. This is a 30 amp uh, ammeter. So we're going to start doing some high power monitoring with it. This is one of my, my new favorites that I'm really getting ready to play with. This is a weather alert radio on the chip. And we're thinking about doing some kind of cool integration with that and the um, lightning detector and the weather station from the first book. This is something I'm planning to do with a rotor. This is a circular LED display. So now you can actually use the LEDs to indicate position. This is a little voice module. plays uh, recorded voice files where you can actually record voice on it. And it's like a $5 module off of eBay. And these are some of the things I'm starting on the second book. When I get, get back to the, the computer and get settled down, uh, I'll pull up the, my outline. We haven't formally done anything for a second book yet, but I have already started outlining and building projects for it. Anyway, let me put my camera back. All right, very good. Well, hey, uh, just a couple things here for everybody that may have missed uh, the last uh, webcast we had on Arduino. Uh, there were all kinds of projects in here, from lightning detector to uh, rot rotator uh, control boxes, uh, CW keyboard, CW decoders. Uh, what am I missing, Glenn? Um Let's see, that's pretty much it. Uh, one of the things I've got is a Yesu controller rebuild. I, I'm going to have to fix that in a minute. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to look really funny here for a, for a second. Yeah. But um, got a Yaesu controller rebuild for the G800 and the G450, plus a computerized modification. And I need to get the aluminum foil. The cat has come in here and figured it out. So um, that's some of where I'm going. <clears throat> one of the things that you can't see on that table over there is one of my next projects, which is actually an antenna analyzer. Okay. So let me move here and get this thing fixed up, and you go ahead, go ahead and go on. All right. Well, very good. Okay. Well, let me get off here for a second. We'll just we'll just swing back over here. Uh, you're off video. Uh, I'll turn your audio down a little. Just mute your mic there. Okay. That's great. Well, listen. Uh, hey, for you guys out there, you got a bad antenna rotator box. Um, Glenn's got a nice Arduino uh, rotor uh, replacement. It goes right inside the box. Plugs right inside and. Uh, It'll save you hundreds of dollars on that thing, and uh, it makes it—it uh, it, it kind of makes it come back to the modern age, you know. Um, hey, I saw and somebody posted where there's a, the new uh, uh, Pi. Uh, what is it? The uh, let me think. Um, they've got a new one out now with. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, uh, it's got, I think, uh, a whole lot of memory, one gig of memory, one one gig of RAM, and uh, it's a, a quad processor, I believe. But anyway, it's, it's priced at $35. So you can see the stuff like Pi and Arduino is really taking off really big here. And uh, I'd love to have someone uh, come on and show this uh, that can talk about... Uh, about the Raspberry Pi, and we, we, you know, we talk about that maybe in, in a segment there. Um, so, uh, Glenn, Glenn, when do you think you're going to be ready to um, uh, have another uh, webcast, uh, Arduino Part Two? Uh, I can be ready anytime you want to. Uh, I've got uh, the weather station, uh, the uh, little satellite tracker, uh, servo-based model. Um, Let's see. Uh, a couple of the other projects from the book that didn't make the uh, the webcast last time, the Yesu rotor controller rebuild, I also have, and uh, a couple others. Uh, so I can do it whenever you're ready. Okay, very good. All right, we'll just stand by there, and if any uh, questions come up uh, uh, on here, we'll uh, we'll put them your way. And I've right. got uh, right here. Hey, there's that CW. Uh, Little CW board right here. Oh, the green screen is the board's the board's green. It's invisible. Anyway, that's uh that's that little CW uh, transceiver. It's like, they don't cost much, maybe fifteen dollars uh, on eBay. You can get it as a kit or you can get it wired. And uh, uh, it's a transceiver. I actually uh, put it on the air the other night. I didn't make a contact with it. I could hear signals and uh, I could hear myself, but. Uh, uh, so far, I haven't uh, spent the time to make a contact with it, but I built your uh, CW keyer, and uh, I wanted to, and I built a CW decoder, the Arduino CW decoder. I was going to put this, the keyer, and the uh, decoder, uh, the keyboard keyer, uh, the decoder, and this all in one little box, and have a little QRP uh, CW rig. So that's kind of what I'm working on, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll uh, we'll work work on that project a little later there. Uh, there's a question from Frank: uh, Is there a Linux version for the Pi? Does anyone know the answer to that? Well, the Pi will run just about any small Linux distribution. Uh, they do have a version that's kind of trimmed down for the Pi, but uh, it pretty much will run any of the smaller Linux distros. Okay. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's check the chat room here real quick. Um, yeah. Into AIE wants a spoiler alert on the Frog Kit mod. Uh, no. <laughs> that is planned to be one of the big kickoffs there at Dayton, and uh, also if there is to be a book two, it will be one of the big chapters in the book. So. Kind of holding that mod a little close to the vest right now. You know, it is open source and it will be released. I just don't know which way and the proper way it's going to be done yet. Well, and you know, I was just reading here, and also uh, I read today where Microsoft 
uh, has a free version of Windows 10 that they they uh, are putting out there to run on that new Raspberry. Yeah, that that new Raspberry looks cool. I may have to start playing with the Raspberry. So for our uh, viewers out there, kind of tell them what the difference is between the Raspberry Pi and the Arduino. They they kind of do some of the same things, but then they don't. Right. Well, uh, to switch my video back. Um, this is the Arduino. Um, you can see it's small. It is designed for control. Um, it does 14 digital I.O. and uh, six analog I.O. pins on it. And it is made to interface and control things. The Raspberry Pi is basically a very miniaturized uh, motherboard that will run Linux distributions. And like you said, the newer Raspberry is going to be running the Windows 10. So that's pretty much the difference is the Raspberry Pi is more of a computer computer and the Arduino is a controller. Okay, great. All right, well, y'all just stand by there. Let's, uh, hey, while we're at it here, let's just break it up a little bit. And let's go back out to, uh, let's go out to Michael out there in uh, Arizona and see what he's doing out there. Michael, uh, do you do any DXing or what do you do mainly? Oh, uh, go ahead. Well, I've uh, done some DXing. Uh, I've been borrowing radios from our local uh, clubs, Elmers, until I just recently bought a um, uh, an IC706 from a coworker who has no interest in becoming a ham, so he sold me that radio. And basically, I'm using it with a um, uh, a vertical uh, antenna, and I've made probably four or five hundred contacts since August of last year. So it's done fairly well, even though I do have a fairly high noise level in this area. I think it might be because of the transformer about 50 feet from the antenna. But uh, been doing some DXing, some contesting, um, mostly local uh, VHF, UHF uh, stuff, though. Okay. Um, you do any uh, 220 work out there? Uh, they do have a 220 repeater here, but I don't have that capability. Uh, we do also have a 2-meter um, uh, sideband net that I can finally, because of this radio, get uh, take part in. Uh, we also have a 10-meter net going on uh, Thursday nights. So our local club is uh, pretty active, uh, both in public service and also just general uh, ham operations. Yeah, well, the reason I asked about 220, it's a very popular uh, band here in, in Memphis. Uh, we've got a couple uh, 220 repeaters on, and it's just like an intercom, and mainly that's where I hold out all the time. It's not near as crowded as your UHF or, you know, your 440 stuff or your 2-meter stuff. So it's uh, it's turned out to be a real uh, a nice uh, way to communicate with uh, friends around town here. Um Okay, um, well, uh, uh, Michael, glad to have you on here tonight, and uh, you're Good one of the our, you're one of our first guests that we've had on here, and like uh, I was telling everybody on the uh, on the webcast here is, if you'd like to be on our show, uh, just email me. In fact, I need to check the email and see if anybody does want to be on. But I'll uh, be glad to bring anybody and everybody into the webcast. Um, you know, again, we wanted to make this webcast different than all the other ham programs that are out there. We wanted you, the viewer, to be part of it. You know, we want you to be able to pick up and show an antenna tuner you built, or talk about this, or ask for help. And uh, there'll be enough people on here that we can uh, we can find someone to help answer your questions. Uh, so again, thank you very much for coming on tonight with us, and uh, just watch the rest of the broadcast. I uh, hope you enjoy it, and. Uh, uh, I'm going to move on to a couple other topics here. Uh, thank you. I think your mic You're is... You're welcome. Yeah, there you go. Okay. All right. Sammy 3, we'll see you later. Okay. Well, um, let's uh, talk just briefly about our schedule and what we're going to be trying to do. Uh, 
I don't know if we've got a lot of new people on here or not. Uh, are there any new people that have never watched the W5KUB.com show before? Uh, let me know in the chat room if you're if you're a new person to uh, W5KUB. Uh, to give you a little background, W5KUB.com has been uh, webcasting major events like Hamvention, uh, several ham fest, field days, uh, ham radio days uh, on the web for about 13 years now, and um, we've had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, and I think our viewers uh, enjoy it. We've given out about $10,000 in prizes each year uh, to our viewers. Uh, you know, if we pick their name in a chat room, and of course the name is random picked by uh, a robot we have called Hambot. And uh, Hambot uh, will pick your name and uh, uh, call your name in a chat room. And let me let me explain to it how it works. Uh, in case people never uh, really met Hambot. Uh, Hambot will will pick your uh, your name. He will put it out there in the chat room for you to claim your prize. He counts down. You got 60 seconds. If you don't claim it, uh, Hambot says sorry, you're uh, you didn't win. And I like it when he does it because when I say the time's up, people argue with me. You know, they say, hey, I came in, I came in just before the time was up. But you know, you can't argue with Hambot. Um, so. So that's really good. Hambot watches the chat room. He knows who's in there. He knows if the winner's in there. And uh, Hambot's also pretty strict. Uh, when uh, when we're giving prizes, Hambot doesn't want anybody else to chat. And if anybody chats, Hambot Hambot will silence you, and uh, you won't be able to chat until you log out and back in. So we've been doing a lot of Hamfest uh, uh, like that. Uh, we've grown a lot. Uh, we we uh, our next big one will be uh, the uh, Dayton Ham Fest in um, in May. Uh, we will have our uh, own uh, uh, KA band satellite internet uplink put in. That's about the only way we can get the show out of Hera Arena uh, is to put in our own satellite uplink. The problem at at Hamvention is that you get 20,000 people in the same room. Everybody's telephone now is 3G, 4G, and they're all hitting the same tower. So the tower is unusable for three days when everybody's there. So we have found that we had to put our uh, own satellite uplink in to, to get the video out to you guys. So we do that. If you watched last year, uh, you probably saw we had a special co-host last year. Uh, astronaut uh, Douglas Wheelock. He was the commander of the uh, International Space Station Expedition 25. He came to be on our show last year. That was his second appearance with us, but he stayed with us last year, and, and we made him a co-host. And uh, he met and talked to a lot of people there. Uh, Doug uh, indicates that he will be back with us again this year as our co-host. Uh, we're trying to work that out. Uh, uh, NASA called me today, and uh, just like any government deal, uh, you know, they want a gazillion dollars, you know, a private jet to jet him around, uh, pay for the hotel, pay for the food, you know, all that kind of stuff. But we're going to work that out. We hope he's back with us. Uh, and uh, Doug is trying to figure out a way to get there where he can be with us on the show again and, and meet everyone. Uh, Doug is a really cool guy. He's really a fun going guy and uh, he likes to talk to you. And, and uh, I talked to Doug when he was in the IIS. I talked to him, I think, 30 times one month. Three of those times I talked to him, I was mobile, driving home from work. And down at the bottom of this page, uh, if you'll click, there's a link down there that shows us sending him barbecue. Uh, for his first meal back on Earth, we sent him some Memphis barbecue, and we talked about that in one of our contacts. So that was really cool. Uh, let's see. We're not going to give away a prize tonight. Sorry, uh, KFC. Uh, and I like that call. That's like Kentucky Fried Chicken, isn't it? KFC. We're not going to do prizes on our weekly. At this time, we're not going to do any prizes on our weekly roundtable. Um but who knows? We may uh, eventually uh, start doing that and and uh, give out a prize 
maybe one prize per per round table. Uh, okay, uh, W4MAA Bobby, he's new to the webcast. He said he saw us at Huntsville last year. Um, I don't know uh, K3NG, but let me write that down. Uh, K3NG, and that's to talk about, uh, okay, to participate in Arduino, okay. Okay, um, okay, so our next, uh, are we, are we green screen? No, nah, we're not green screen, we're, uh, that's the shack back there. Uh, you know, we don't we don't play around with we don't we don't believe in green screen stuff here. That's for sure. Uh, that's the bill W6CBS there. I just got in the teleprompt, the teleporter, and we just went to Paris real quick there. Um, let me change it back here. Uh, that's not a ham radio uh, deal. I'll tell you what, what we can do. Let's go to the let's go to the Enterprise Bridge. Yeah, we'll just go there for a little while. So, ha ha ha. I thought our green screen was so good. I mean, we we put a lot of money in our green screen. We probably had three dollars in our green screen. So uh, you know, it, it's uh, I didn't know you'd you'd be able to tell that. Well, anyway, uh, uh, Hunt, uh, Dayton is coming up pretty soon. I think in April we'll probably do a live show from Gigaparts down in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, it's always a neat little deal. They have a ham radio day, and we'll uh, spend that Saturday with them down there and do a webcast. And then, of course, uh, in May is uh, the uh, Dayton Ham Fest. Um, we'll probably do a field day. We'll probably do a Memphis Ham Fest in uh, April, probably. Uh, many of you probably saw the last uh, trip we took. We, um, we were invited to go out to L.A., and we're the guest uh, of our of, of John Amadeo out there, and we uh, uh, did a webcast of the special event station K6H from the stage of Last Man Standing. Uh, so we did a lot of interviews, and, and I did some tours and showed people the stages. We had uh, complete uh, uh, reign of the stage. We were, we could go anywhere we wanted to. And uh, we met, uh, I met with Tim Allen on two days before the webcast, and Tim had just received his license. Uh, he just got his ham license, but he didn't want anyone to know it. And, of course, we were wanting to announce that on our webcast. We were wanting to break the news. So I, I talked to Tim two days before, and I said, Tim, can we announce it? I said, you know, it's in a public FCC database. People are going to find out. And he says, oh, he said, I didn't know that. So... Uh, he said, yeah, go ahead and announce it, just don't tell them my call letters. But anyway, so we, we got to break the news and announce it that uh, uh, Tim Allen uh, did get his license uh, uh, back then. Uh, made contact with K6H via Echolink, yeah. Uh, the QSL cards are coming out pretty slow from the K6H event out there. I don't think they advertised it very well. Uh, but if you'll send them a self-addressed stepped envelope, I think you'll get a card back pretty quick. They uh, they didn't didn't say that was a requirement, but uh, I know that's uh, that's the people that are starting to get cards back quicker. And and think about it, they made about 8,000 contacts, and a postage stamp now is about 40 cents for uh, a postcard. So you make 8,000 contacts, that's about $3,000 in postage. So uh, that's an uh, that's an expense that they didn't consider when they put that event on. All right, well, so Bill says he's in broadcasting. Yep, I I can tell that Bill with that call W6CBS. So you can see right through the green screen. Very good. 
Hey, Tom, do I have audio? You do have audio, uh, Glenn. Okay, one of the things I was going to throw out, if you are interested, I'm going to put you on the spot. At the Memphis Delta Club in April, I will be doing an Arduino forum there. Uh, you might be interested in doing a live broadcast on that. Okay, now that would be it. We'll talk, we'll talk the details out about that. Okay. Yeah, just want to throw it out there. Yeah, that'd, that'd be cool. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, Bill, uh, it's not paint. The uh, green screen is not paint. We actually have some material just hanging over the uh, kind of pinned to the wall there. Uh, let's see what else is in the chat room. I hadn't been able to watch it real close. Let's see if there's any other any questions for Glenn. Let's see. When when do you want to do? Okay, uh, Bruce says Tom. When do you want to do any more Last Man Standing specials? Well, you know, hey. I'd love to do a last man special again at any time. Uh, we really enjoyed our trip out to uh, L.A. Uh, they really took great care of us out there and uh, made us feel like family, and uh, we didn't really didn't want to leave. We stayed about a week out there with them. I'm not sure if there will be another K6H this, this coming year or not. They probably won't do them every year. Okay, anybody, uh, anybody have any questions so far about what we're doing? Again, uh, nothing's planned on this webcast tonight. It's kind of a, uh, uh, you know, what you see is what you get. Uh, there were a couple other people that were going to join us on a video, uh, uh, remote video here, but um, they haven't made it yet. Let's see, who is this? Let me see who this is. Oh, okay, I still Michael there. Um, so I don't know uh, if we're going to get any more visitors in here tonight or not. So it's, uh, we've been in this about 45 minutes. Uh, I'd like to just uh, uh, ask everyone if they would if they would join our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group for W5KUB.com, and I don't know if uh, this link works or not. I'll try to send it. Uh, If I can find it, there we go. I don't know if that's going to work or not. You guys might click on that link and see if it takes you to uh, our Facebook group. If it doesn't, just under Facebook, just do a search up there for w5kub.com. And that group is also intended for ham radio. Uh, it's our broadcast page for this uh, to keep you updated on all the things we do in these webcasts. There's a lot of pictures on there. Uh, a lot of information about the webcast, but it's also a place for ham radio operators just to get on there and talk about what they want to put a picture of your shack on there or whatever you want to do. Um, so that, that's a, that's a good hangout there. Also, um, if you guys would like to be, and if you're not on our mailing list, uh, send me an email just to tom at w5kub.com. Tom at w5kub.com and uh, ask to be put on our mailing list and that way we'll send out we send out a mailing uh, before every webcast uh, just to remind people that it's happening and there's 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 supposed to be a remove link on there I think the the email we sent out today we forgot to put the remove link on there sorry about that folks uh, but we'll take care of you but if you want to be put on our uh, mailing list just send me a, a note to w5kub.com and you know I'm I'm old school. I like to do uh, building and things like that. Uh, I, you know I I grew, I've been a ham for 50 years. I got my license in 1964. And uh, you know I'm an old tube guy and a resistor and capacitor and transformer guy. So I like building things. And uh, uh, I'm just getting into the little small stuff like the Arduino and stuff. And I'm, I'm not a programmer, you know, I'm not a programmer at all. But I'll show you some of the things that I would like to talk about on some of these webcasts. And people, I'd like for you to come on and show us what you've got and what you did. But let me get something right here for you. You know, I like, I like 
building simple things like this. This is, you know, it's, it's a rotary inductor. Rotary inductor. It's got a uh, capacitor, and we got we got DC motors on it right here. And just remotely, you can put this at the base of your antenna, and you can remotely just with two switches run the uh, run the inductor up and down, or you can run the capacitor, or, you know, back and forth, uh, and make a remote antenna tuner. And these are real, you know, they're real easy and real cheap to, to build. Now, you get someone like Glenn on here. Glenn can take the Arduino, and he can take servo motors and put on that right there. And he can take a little modified SWR pickup, and he can actually make an auto antenna tuner using Arduino. Uh, is that, how hard would that be, Glenn? Let me get you on here. Go ahead. Uh, that's what I was just typing in the chat room. I just had one of those, wouldn't it be cool if we could do that moments? I don't think it's going to be that hard at all to do with stepper motors and servos. Not at hard at all. And, yeah. Uh, one of the things you didn't get to see on the bench over there deliberately, uh, you may have seen the pieces, I am working on a uh, SWR analyzer and that could easily be translated into an auto tuner piece for that. Okay, well, cool. Well, I want, I want you working on that pretty soon and we'll upgrade mine and we'll put some some servo motors on it. Oh, that sounds fun. All right. G7VFY here has a 100-foot long wire antenna out there. Man, that tuner I just showed you, it tunes a long wire just, man, beautifully. You know, great job. Yeah, Bruce wanted to ask you a question in the chat room. Yeah, what was the question, Bruce? Bruce, Bruce, question for Glenn. He just said he wanted to ask a question, and he hadn't posted it yet. Okay. There's a there's there's a friend of mine, I Romero, just joined. Ivan Romero down in uh, Miami. Boy, I miss Miami. I used to get down there all the time. Uh, let me let me put the let me, let me put the camera back on me there. Cool. Ivan, how you like my uh, how you like where I am, man? I bought the uh, I bought the Star Trek uh, ship here. Hadn't got it running yet. I hadn't figured out how to start it up yet, but I'm uh, I'm in here. Bruce wanted to know how do you do the uh, green screen, basically. Okay. Oh, okay. <coughs> well, the green screen is pretty simple. If you got a program that does green screen and you got a green screen, uh, for instance, there's my green screen right there. It's just uh, <clears throat> I'll show you all my secrets. There's a uh, there's the green screen. So you just set up, uh, you just put your green screen up there, and then of course the program will actually lay. Uh, it makes that that part back there a transparency, and uh, you can you can put layers. It builds layers. I'm I'm in a layer out in front of that screen, so I can put pictures and different things on that layer. Uh, for instance, let me just let's see what we can. Let's play with the green screen for a minute since we had a question about green screen. Let's see what we can do next. Now, you know, not that I really want to do this, but I'm thinking about running for Congress. You know, I know things are pretty bad here. But no, I probably won't. Let me see. I don't like that picture. Let me get a different one here. Um, so I can just put different. Uh, let me uh, let me go up to the space station. Let's just go back to the space station, and you know we can. Uh, we can look out the window here in the space station, you know. So let me walk over here. I'll, I'll get. I'll have to kind of duck down a little bit. Oh man. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. We're we're in a space station right now, and uh, this is this is the window right here. I look out mostly. I'm kind of like a weatherman now, right? 
I look out this window mostly, and if you've noticed during the whole show, this uh, this front here, this cloud right here, has not moved any on us. I don't know what's going on, and uh, it must be because we're not moving. But uh, you could actually put a video in the background, and you could actually have moving clouds back there, uh, and make it look uh, look like you're there. Let's see. So, I guess what we can do here, you know, I can give you a shot here. Here's our studio. This is the, this is the W, let me wait for it. Yeah, this is, oh, no, no, that's the wrong one. I'm in the wrong room here. Um, Here we go. This uh, I'm calling back. Hey guys, back in the studio. Uh, t uh, c put the camera on the studio here. So this is uh, this is my background of my studio right here. You can see we're very high tech right now. The guys we hire, we 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 don't let them move. They're very stationary back there. They they're watching their job. And then I guess I need to get back to. Uh, let me get back just a ham radio here. So we'll just uh, we'll go back to my ham station right here. There we go. Okay. Um, let's see. You want a warm beach? I don't have a beach on here right now. Uh, Yeah, I would be interested in, in having a, a guest on to talk about Digital Voice or Fast Scan TV. Uh, we've got some uh, local Memphis people that are working on uh, some of the uh, the IP uh, WAN uh, networks, uh, and they've got it up and running, I think, now. So uh, that'll be an interesting uh, 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 segment if we get them in here. Asking about DRM radio signals, I've got uh, several friends that uh, I wish uh, had joined us tonight. They're real big into DRM and can probably uh, uh, talk your language about DRM. All right, they seem to like the ham station best, so that's, we'll just stay in a ham station here. And... Uh, All right. Well, our, uh, our our guest from England uh, didn't make it. He was uh, emailing me just an hour prior to the show saying he wanted to join us. But, you know, that would be 3 o'clock in the morning in England, so I, I guess he probably just went to bed. You know, we've been on about an hour. I don't know how long the show's supposed to last. We didn't set a time. Let's see. Yeah, it's about 5 till uh, 9 right now, central time. Uh, but So we'll... Uh, I guess we'll uh, probably end the show officially at 9 o'clock, and then we'll just sit around and chat with people, you know, on here. Maybe we should have uh, some type of net afterwards. I don't know. Maybe we need some net controls, you know, to be, be a net where we can... Uh, we can talk to you guys. But again, anybody who wants to be on the uh, webcast, send me an email. Think about what you what you're working on or or whatever, and, and send us an email. And it's really easy to get on here. If you got a if you got a little webcam, I can get you on here very easy, uh, uh, either through Skype or uh, either through Skype or through uh, Google Hangout. And that's what Glenn is on. He's on Google Hangout. Glenn and uh, Michael are on a Google Hangout. The nice thing about Google Hangout, it lets you, it, it switches automatically whoever's talking. It actually switches that video. Uh, let's see, just invited my friend Mike come over and see how they're doing. Uh, would you like to put him on? Y sure. Uh, okay. Um, we may have one more guest on here um, before we go. Let's see. What are we, yes? Yeah. I do have another piece of news that I just about forgot about. All right. And that 
that uh, QST will be publishing my article on the introduction to the Arduino uh, sometime this late spring summer and they also uh, are going to be printing another article I did on building a portable uh, go box that's extreme that's the one I, you saw at uh, our field day set up over here in uh, Memphis and uh, they're going to be publishing that uh, probably in their September issue I just got that uh, a couple days ago okay all right so I, I got a private here. message here where um We've got another person that may join us on the uh, video, uh, KG7OIL, may join us. Let's see. Let's see if I can get some feedback from there. Uh, uh, W1DGL, hello. Uh, when will your friend be on? Uh, probably five minutes or so. He, he just has to come across from the, uh, the place where he works so over to my place. Oh okay. Oh okay. I okay, Michael. I I got you. Okay. Very good. Well, we'll leave it. We'll leave it up here, and uh, you know, this will this will be fine. Uh, in fact, um, in fact, uh, let's see. I, I might be able to invite some other people. They have some interesting topics. They usually have a Google Hangout at nine o'clock, which is now. But if I can get them a a link to them, uh, they may join here. Um, lost the video, he said. It'll come back. Well, the show tonight, it wasn't anything spectacular. Like I say, we didn't have any agenda uh, built up, and uh, we wanted to just try to do something to, to uh, have uh, you, the viewer, uh, take part in this. Uh, we wanted you to be on the show. Um, let me look back at my friend Ivan Romero that I was talking about a while ago. I, I didn't look at the chat room and see if he made any comments when I talked about him. Let's see. Oh, I look good. Okay, he didn't have much to say. All right, is there anything else in the chat room? Anybody have any questions? Um, we're going to stick around here probably for another half hour or so, so you don't have to run off. Uh, Trying to see how many people we ended up with tonight. Uh, we had about 40. We got 40 users tonight in the uh, in the chat room. Uh, you know that's pretty low attendance for us. Uh, for Dayton, we'll have over 1,000 people in this chat room. It becomes very uh, very packed and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, with uh, with this webcast uh, being new, uh, we understood our attendance is probably low but you know what if we do it every week maybe we can uh, build the uh, build the viewer base up uh, on it out there yeah yeah it's the quality the quality of the people right not the quantity that, that count here okay Well, thank you, Tommy, K04, no, that's not K0, that's K04SY, Tommy. Thanks a lot for uh, uh, your comments there. These new calls, man, I tell you, you know, I was licensed 50 years ago, and, you know, back then we had Ws and Ks, and that's about it, you know, and none of this fancy stuff like AG4 and, you know, all this stuff. That, that, that's, that's really weird. Anyway, I'm about to get used to that, but... We had a winner. I, we had a winner on on, a, on our webcast here uh, last year. Uh, won a Hile mic, and of course Bob Bob Hile is a great uh, supporter of our uh, webcast. And uh, we had a winner. It was something like the call was like W W O zero something, and somehow it got transferred on the prize is instead of W O zero it got transferred to W zero O. You can see how that happens, man. So the prize went to the wrong person. Uh it went to a lady whose husband had died like three or four years earlier and it uh she just uh couldn't understand how uh 
how people keep, you know, sending her husband stuff. So, you know, we apologize for that, but you can see W O zero looks a whole lot like W zero O. V U three V W R. Hey, that's uh, that, that's India. We got India in here tonight. Hello, V U three V W R. We got India in here. We've got uh, a ZL1 in here. ZL1 uh, GSM is a regular uh, person in our uh, in our uh, uh, webcast here. He's down uh, in New Zealand. Do we have any other DX? Let's see. We had India and we had uh, New Zealand on. Did anybody see anybody else uh, that I missed? I know we had Canada. Of course, I can't count them as uh, I can't count them as you know long distance. You've got uh, G seven VFY. Oh yeah, yeah. We had the UK. Yep, yep. We had the UK there. Yeah, Joe. We'll do a kit building uh, one, one day with you uh, uh, if we can, you know. Uh, Streamline it where we can get it down to like 10 minutes or so, you know, show show the basics and so forth. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, ZL1 GSM. Thanks a lot. And, oh, man, Lisa, Lisa, W5 FOX, way up there, way up there in Illinois. I'll, uh, I'll let me see if I can switch camera. I'll give you guys a, a little quick tour of the uh, of the uh, ham shack here and what we're what we're dealing with. All right, this will be uh, this is our uh, our webcast position tonight, right here. Um, and. You First we come over to the camera and uh, then we come up, uh, we got a wall mounted unit where we can kind of watch things from the wall. That's our encoder, encoder that we use. Uh, I know I got away from the microphone. Here's uh, here's part of the workbench. Uh, this is where I, I, I probably spend more of my time on the workbench than I do hamming. And then we kind of come around the room, and then there's the there's our, our operating position right there, mostly Kenwood for HF. Uh, any of you guys familiar with the old old Kenwood stuff? There's a there's a uh, 820 820 with uh, a, you know speaker, antenna tuner, VFO. Then we get into the 2000. And then you know the 570s, and then the little small uh, AL 811H amp, and then uh, let's see, uh, there's an Alinko uh, 220, a D Star, D Star for eight and 880H, uh, dual bander. Uh, so that's kind of the run around, rundown of the uh, ham shack here. And you saw the green screen. Oh, uh, let's see, Wobbly Cam. Yep, that's the Wobbly Cam. You know, when we first started, uh, when we first started the webcast, we were known as the Helmet Cam people. We actually started with a helmet, a hard hat camera on it and we walked around but we could never tell what we were looking at with that camera because it was hard to, you know there was no monitor you couldn't tell what you were aimed at also people were getting seasick you know you move your head a lot you move your head back and forth a whole lot as you're walking around and of course on the internet it, you know all that movement is not good so we decided let's go with a fixed camera it'll give you a little bit better uh, view of what's what's going on, and it looks a little bit more professional too. You know, another thing we do, if you, you guys hadn't followed us, when we go to these events like Dayton, we'll uh, we'll stream stream live from the car. 
we will uh, we've got a we've got a, uh, a dash mounted cam. We're live. Uh, it's a 10-hour drive to Dayton. We'll stream that uh, live. We've got a hood mounted a hood mounted camera that aims back at the truck. We've got an inside camera where you can see the people inside the truck, and we have a rear view mirror camera that is on the forward picture where you can look where it looks like you're driving. You'll actually see the the road in front, and you'll see the little rear view mirror uh, cam up at the top. So uh, that's something. Some of the extra cameras we've added lately. Um, let's see. Um, interesting story. Something always happens funny uh, on these trips. And for you guys who have heard the story before, just uh, go to the bathroom or get your Coca-Cola or something. But... Um, Coming back from Dayton, Ohio, uh, four years ago, I think, maybe five, we were stopped. The police stopped us doing 89 and a 70, and we were streaming, and uh, they were pretty mad at us. They stopped behind us and looked at our tags, and they sat back here about 15 minutes before they came up to the window. And then when they looked in, the car was full of cables and wires and Cat 5 cables and antennas and and GPS's and radios and dual banders and antennas and and lands for the computers and computers and cameras and and hubs and switches and all the stuff's wired up in the car, you know. So they were probably about to call um, Homeland Security. She took my license, said, "Do you know how fast? You know why I stopped you?" And I go, uh, "Yes." And about then, she almost gets run over. And she throws the license back at me, and she says, I'll be back. And she jumps in the car and chases this guy down. Well, we knew she's going to be back. We knew she had our tag number. We didn't want to leave. So we, we sat there for an hour. And my buddy kept wanting to get out and go up in the trees to take a leak. And I kept saying, no, no, you can't go up there in the forest. If she's coming back and they see you coming out of the woods, they're going to think you dumped something up there. And they're going to bring the dogs out here. And they're going to unload this entire car that we've got packed from Dayton that we can't get one more nut or bolt in. So he had to hold it. Anyway, she didn't come back. And the interesting thing was right in front of our car, there was a sign on the side of the road that says uh, trouble or something called Tennessee Highway Patrol at this, you know, star, you know, one two or whatever we called them and i said to him i said you know she said that she, i i said i think she said she'll be back i said we want to do the right thing but i think she said she'll be back now of course she didn't say i think i'll be back she says i'll be back and yelled it at me but anyway very nice they came back over the phone and told us that they talked to her on the radio and uh, she said we were free to go. So everybody in the chat room was taking up a collection for that uh, that uh, hour we were sitting there. We thought we were going to jail, but uh, we got out of that one. So that's cool. Uh, not too much lead foot. We normally don't drive fast, but I don't know. That day, and, and the thing about it, we were convoying that day. My buddy was in front of us with a pickup truck. We had radios. Somehow he goes through it, and by the time he tells me that there's radar, I can see the whites of their eyes, you know. So far, we've had a pretty good turnout. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with that for tonight. But again, if anybody is building any projects or want to get on here and show their project or talk about it, uh, please send me an email. We're looking for uh, we're looking for uh, some material, you know, to put on these. Again, very informal. If you've got a if you got a webcam, let's see what we got there. Uh, Michael's holding up something. Let's see what Michael's holding up. Let me let's switch back to Michael out in Arizona. 
Let's see. What do you got, uh, Michael? This is, um, this is an MFJ 9320 that I built from a kit that was given to me by one of our local Elmers. I haven't used it yet. It's a 20-meter QRP uh, CW transceiver. And since I don't know CW well enough to get on the air yet, I uh, have yet to use it. And I still need to find the equipment to align it and test it to make sure it's working properly. I don't, even though I work in an electronics shop, I don't have access to that type of equipment. So I've got to go over to one of my Elmers and see if they hey, they have the equipment that I can use. To, to align it, test it, and make sure it's working right. I also don't have a key, but it was a good project to build. It, it was fun, and it powers up, but I don't know if it actually transmits or not. Well, well, I don't know why you need to align that thing. Man, hey, I'm going to talk 50 years ago. I'm 16, 50 years ago, ham radio operator, no other hams. I was, I was in a big town, 1,900 people. Uh, so, you know, there's no Elmer's, no help here. I got my ham license. Man, you know, back then we didn't have SWR meters. We didn't have anything, man. I mean, we tuned up with a light bulb. You take a 100-watt light bulb, put it on the end of your transmitter, and you tune that sucker up till it's bright, and then you throw the antenna back on it, and who knows if it's any, you know, who knows if it power went the antenna. But the funny thing was, people would actually answer us, and we actually talked to, uh, we actually talked to people back then, you know. Oh, uh, it looks like we might be getting Michael's company in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute Michael. All right. I think I muted Michael. So we'll just. Okay. Well, Michael's uh, probably gonna add his guest there in a minute. Let me see what's, uh, what's going on here with Michael. Michael, I muted you. You have to unmute it. There we go. Uh, well, Mike is here, KG7OIL, but he chooses not to come on oh, the he, camera. He didn't uh, want to come on? All right. So, no, he, oh, he is yeah. here. He, he is standing right next to me, but he chooses not to come on Okay. Camera. So you, you, what you're saying, he's got a he's got a, a face for radio then, right? Which one? Uh, yeah, pretty he's, much. He's got a face, <laughs> face for radio. you have a face for radio. Yeah, okay. Well, if he doesn't want to come on, that's okay. Maybe next time he will. Uh, get on camera. I'm trying to get him. I'm trying to coax him to get him on camera. Well, you know, here. we. I don't think we can make anybody do what they don't so. want to do. So, you know, maybe maybe next week. Maybe next week he can join us. Just say hi to everybody. Let's go on Trying to coax him is uh, like trying to pull teeth here. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I can tell you, you know, it don't look like he's going to do it. So. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna switch yeah, back. We're not gonna pull. If he decides to get on, let me know, okay? Maybe next time. All right, yeah, he said maybe next time. Okay, that's fine. All right, very good. Okay, I'm back to uh, back to our camera here. All right, let's see. Great news. Let's see. Claremore. Oh man, Joe. I don't know. Deb, uh, K zero. NEB Joe, I don't know how you go to all these ham fest. You must have won the PCH clearinghouse lottery or something. I don't know how you go to all these ham fest. You're, you're every one of them that I know of. And K is J4 uh, ZBK. Thank you. Pl yeah, please help us pass the word. Uh, we'll get the we'll get mailings out. We post in a lot of Facebook groups, but. People don't always uh, read, you know, the Facebook group uh, right before the show. In um, uh, one KFC is talking about a 10 meter repeater. Uh, you know, I've 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 never worked a 10 meter repeater, uh, but I know they're out there, and I, it it probably would be a cool thing to have. Joe says he likes to travel. Yeah, but it takes money, Joe. How do you do that, man? Tell us your secret. There's not a ham fest that uh, K0 NEB has not been to. He, uh, he, he somehow he gets to all of them. There's another Joe. Let's see. Hold on, let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, a W, what is it, WA5FLT. That's another Joe we've got over in uh, Oklahoma. G7VFY is getting very late over there. It must be getting about 3 a.m. Man, you need to go to bed. Let's see if I missed anything. All right. Oh, hey, we got somebody on here. Let's see if he decided to get on here with us. Let's let's look at this. Let me let me get him on a webcast here. I think he 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 gave in. There we go. Who are we who are we talking to there? Uh, this is the other mic, KG7OIL. Oh yeah, okay, KG7OIL. Now that sounds like a vanity call. You must own an oil well out there. Oh, I wish I was rolling in it. I mean, you, you got you got some oil. Do you have any oil wells out in Arizona? No, they, it, it, it's an as assigned call. That's the call he was assigned. Yeah, okay, My okay. original call was KG, KG7JVO. Okay. But my call is a vanity. All right. So I was just assigned. Okay. Well, I've seen uh, I've seen some funny assigned calls here. You know, I thought maybe you were a, a a rich oil baron or something that we had on here, and we could get you to help sponsor maybe our webcast. You know, we we only need about four thousand bucks per per webcast, and we'll be set. Well, then you'd be fighting my four ex wives for it. Ah, uh, okay. okay. Uh, all, all right. Well, well, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Are any of them hams? Are any of them hams? Oh, no, 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 no. no. I was just joking. No, okay. If, I, if okay. I was that wealthy, I'd have four ex-wives. All right. Well, let me let me tell you, you know, these calls. Again, I was talking about calls earlier. Uh, you know, at one point the FCC didn't used to issue certain calls, like for instance, uh, N1ASS. You know, they just used to not do stuff like it. Now, I remember that. If you remember, I don't know if you watched our webcast in Day uh, Dayton last year, but we had astronaut Wheelock. He was helping us give out prizes, and one of the prizes we gave out was a starter kit. It was a uh, uh, a dual band radio and it had a book and some other things it was a starter kit and uh, Doug Doug said uh, he said uh, man I could really use that and of course Doug on the International Space Station his call was NA1SS so Doug said man I could use that so Hambot picks the name and Hambot picks N1ASS and we all about went crazy. First of all, we thought, how did Doug win this? You know, NA1SS? But it was, and as we looked at it a little closer, it was N1ASS, and we thought, hey, that's got to be, somebody's punking us. He didn't believe it. But it turned out to be a real call, and the guy actually won it. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> so either, either you guys uh, made it to uh, the Dayton Hamvention? Uh, no, I'd like to go someday, but uh, so far the only hamventions I've ever been to are the small ones, the local ones. <clears throat> I'd like to go to Yuma uh, in about a week or so, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, N1 KFC says, love is grand, divorce is 500 grand. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think you. I saw that you would enjoy uh, you'd enjoy Dayton up there. Uh, something interesting always happens, you know. And you know the place is getting old and run down, but you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's the Dayton Hamvention, and we've been going for 34 years. And I mean, I've I've seen tents set up inside the building before because it was running inside the building. That that actually happened. Uh, years ago, and people in the chat room, maybe people in the chat room might right remember this. They used to have the the portable toilets inside the flea market years ago, and uh, 
the year one of them turned over right there next to the hot dog stand. Oh man, let me tell you that was a that was a mess. Let me tell you. So anyway, I, I think then after that the next year and on all the uh, portable toilets were outside the fences. Of course, uh, you know there's still a hex on Dayton there. Um, you know. Uh, just because they move the toilets outside the fences still doesn't remove the danger. Uh, I think two years ago, the well, first of all, the, the, all the toilets usually back up with 20,000 people using them, and you know how some hams can be. You know, <laughs> they eat those uh, broth worst uh, hot dogs and stuff. And I mean, you know, hey, any, any, anyway. So uh, two years ago, the sewer actually exploded out in a flea market. Probably not exploded. Let's just say it erupted. And uh, right under the flea market, man, the sewage starts running out there, and uh, that made a lot of people mad. Uh, so we had they had to call the uh, people to come, uh, you know, sweep it up, mop it up, and uh, it was actually under some people's uh, flea market spaces. Uh, so you know, something exciting always happens. Oh, we must have lost Michael. He's leaning back there. Uh, no, no, I just muted the mic. Uh, okay. Mike has to leave here. He has to go back over to the shelter to do his night manager stuff. So I'll turn the uh, laptop back. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, Michael, yeah, again, thanks for joining here. us tonight. And uh, we'll, hopefully we'll see you at our, our next show next week, you know. Yeah, he has a laptop with a webcam, too, so I'll okay. let him know how to get on and, and contact you and so forth. Yeah, okay, okay, very good. All right, send me three to you. Let me put it over here on Glenn. Glenn's been sitting back, and he hasn't been saying much. Glenn, what do you think about tonight, man? What could we do better? Um, more, more, more projects, more entertainment? Yeah, we need some more entertainment. We need some more folks coming in on the video. Uh, yeah talking and showing off some things. Uh, I think the mesh guys would be good to have on here one night. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, I mean, it, it's good so far. I mean, you know, the, the, the technical side has gone really, really well. And, uh, you know, I think that's the big part is you've got the tech side going. Well, I'm uh, I'm trying to do all the switching myself, and you know, and concentrate on what what I'm saying, and read the chat room, and you know, uh, take care of the cameras and the different things. So uh, sometimes I forget to move the camera, but uh, for the, for the most part, I think everybody uh, got to understand most most of the uh, uh, discussions that we've had. Yeah, and I think as we go forward, you'll get some more people in here, and we'll get more questions and more chat going on, you know, so the show will kind of make itself as you go on. Okay, well, um, all right. Well, I'm going to... Ha, ha, ha. They're, uh, they're commenting in the chat room uh, about uh, the... The disaster out there. Yeah, I missed that one. Uh, last year, all we had to deal with was the the hail and the storms. Yeah, well, you know, last year I was inside. I didn't think it did much outside. I thought it just sprinkled a little bit. No, I stepped out for a little bit. I don't want to say hail. It was more like sleet, but sleet in May kind of surprised me. Well, you know, it didn't surprise me. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I, going up here 34 years, and, and the Hamvention used to be in April, one month earlier, for many, many years. And let me tell you, the weather, and we were always outside. We'd set up a tent outside in the flea market. It was brutal, man. Let me tell you, it would rain. It would sleet. It would snow. You'd get sunburned. You'd get flooded. You'd get blown away. And guess what? All that happens the same weekend. Wow. Now, that, that flea market, if you have never been to Dayton, that flea market will blow you away. It is just amazing. Well, I hope it uh, picks back up a little bit. Uh, 35 years ago, it was so crowded outside that uh, you, could not, you couldn't pick a rock up and throw it down the aisles outside without hitting somebody. You couldn't walk around. It took two and a half days to walk around to every flea market spot 
people were uh, elbow to elbow. It was very difficult to, to see stuff. In the last ten year, five years at least, it's become more empty out there. You could pick up a rock now and throw it down an aisle and probably not hit anybody. I think attendance is down about 20,000 now. I think it was up in the 30,000s uh, uh, in earlier days. I believe a lot of people now just come and go inside. They go inside where all the new vendors are. Maybe they're not interested so much in the old stuff. You know, I was interested in the old stuff, the the old radios, the stuff I could tear up and get parts out of, you know. Uh, I'm not a real appliance operator. I didn't used to be. Of course, all my ATF rigs over here now are, you know, I bought them. But, you know, we used to build our own stuff. Well, that was me. That's why I was out in the flea market. I was looking for stuff to, to, to get for projects and whatnot. And by the time I made it inside, my backpack had about 40 pounds of stuff in it. You know, so it's, it's amazing. But, you know, talking about the ham fests, uh, I went to Jackson. Mississippi's hemp this past week, and they're actually growing, and I think that that's a trend that is kind of starting again, is with a lot of the newer folks coming into ham radio, we're seeing the ham fest growing a little bit, which is a good sign. Yeah, you know, I've never been down to uh, to uh, Jackson. I needed to go. I, I missed the opportunity to go this, this time, but uh, uh, I, I'll probably make it down here. I was looking at some of the chat room here. Uh, Talking about Mendelssohn's, you know, Mendelssohn always has about, I'm, I'm guessing they've got 20 or 30 fleet market spaces. They put a majorly large tent up. The problem I got with Mendelssohn's, I usually buy by the pound, five pounds of bolts and nuts, you know, every year there. But the problem I've got with Mendelssohn's is they never have any nuts that match any of the bolts. <laughs> No, but I've bought a lot of stuff in that tent this year. Uh, I was looking for, uh, we, we built a little animatronic style Arduino thing for the local library. And uh, that was, I was looking for all sorts of relays and motors and gears and all sorts of weird stuff. And they had a pile of it. So it was... It was worthwhile to me. I mean, I got everything I needed. Well, I, I'll go many years and not spend a single single quarter up there on anything. Of course, since we'll be doing a webcast, we don't have time to even look around. I I, I generally miss the uh, miss hamvention. I mean, I see it from behind a camera. We're busy. We work the whole time. I mean, I'm lucky if I buy a, a PL259, you know, while I'm up there. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it took me, you know, the whole two days just to go see everything and then, you know, pick up everything that I was looking for. And uh, this year, you know, I'm probably going to be hung up at the ARRL booth and your booth and the QRP Arky booth. I'm probably not going to be able to see it as much as I did last year. Yeah, I, I was reading the comments here. Uh, Mendelssohn sold a lot of uh, boots and blankets. Yeah, they, they, they do. Uh, and umbrellas, probably. Hey, I remember one year a guy brought a big truck, probably a 14-foot truck in here, full of rifles and guns. They finally uh, made him leave, but uh, I can't believe he brought that stuff in here to sell. Yeah, there's some strange stuff there for sure. Oh, I can't stay too long. All right. Oh, this going to be a treat. Let me, okay, there we go, he muted. All right, well, guys, you know, we've, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it was success tonight. I want to thank everybody for uh, attending tonight. Uh, let me get the camera, let me get the other camera back on me, if I can figure out how to do it. There we go. I want to thank everybody for uh, attending tonight. Uh, our, uh, this was actually our second weekly I show again the first one we didn't advertise so I think we only had six people attend so we had a pretty good uh, group tonight we had about 40 people in here tonight I think uh, we could easily build that up you know to you know a hundred people uh, in, within a month if we just get the word out so if everybody would just help us uh, uh, spread the word we want to make this uh, we want to make this webcast 
<clears throat> turn it down. We want to make this webcast uh, for you guys and get, make you a part of the webcast. We don't want it just to be one way. So uh, help us, help us spread the word. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. It turned out a lot better than I thought it did. Uh, we'll try to have some uh, interesting uh, topics maybe next time. But again, we want to keep it, keep a lot of it informal. Send me an email. That's, that's okay. Uh, uh, send me an email if you would like uh, to be on the next webcast. Uh, again, it's very easy to be on here. Uh, all you need to do is ha have a, a webcam and create a Google Plus account. You know, just sign up for a Google Plus account. And all I do is send you a link, and you click on it, and you're on the webcast with your webcam. That's, uh, that's all you have to do. Um, help us spread the word, get the word out, uh, put it on your Facebook groups, put it on your email distributions, and uh, really uh, thanks, thanks to everyone for watching tonight. So, hey, everybody, you can go home now, uh, do whatever you want to do, um, or you can stick around, you know. We're going we're gonna to stick around, and we're going to talk to the last person uh, goes to sleep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off record, if I can figure out how to do it, uh, right there.